This video was made possible by Squarespace. Build your beautiful website with Squarespace for 10% off at squarespace.com slash H-A-I. Chances are that somewhere on the internet you've heard the fact that Iceland was named Iceland by its Viking settlers to stop their enemies from coming to the island. Well, that fact is about as wrong as pineapple on pizza. The truth is that the first Norse settler of the island was feeling a little bummed out upon arrival since his daughter and livestock died en route, so he just stayed for the winter before returning to Norway, and since the particular area he stayed in just happened to be icy, he figured all of the island was icy and therefore called it Iceland. Of course, that'd be as absurd as, you know, seeing that the sidewalk was flat and deciding the whole earth must be flat. Or something. Iceland is cold and has plenty of snow and ice during the winter, but as a whole the country is fairly green. Still, for such a northern and wintry country, the idea that it imports ice is pretty absurd. Nonetheless, that is reality, but Iceland's ice importation has a surprisingly rational explanation. Now, taking ice from one place and selling it in another is nothing new. El Chapo was great at it, but as it turns out, centuries ago, people's refrigerators didn't have ice dispensers. For the majority of history, people just dealt with having warm drinks like cave people, but when the 19th century rolled around, that all changed. An entrepreneur named Frederick Tudor started taking ice from cold places like Maine and selling it in hot places like Cuba. Genius, right? Only problem, ice melts. Frederick understood this and insulated his cargo with sawdust, and with enough ice, at least some of it would make it through the 1600 mile journey from Maine to Cuba. At first Frederick received a frosty reception from the hot place people as they were doubtful that they needed ice, so Frederick channeled his inner drug dealer and gave him their first bit of ice for free to get them addicted. Soon, business was booming. Now, places like New York and DC get too cold in the winter for people to want ice, but in the summer, they too get swelteringly hot, so Frederick wanted to make a way to be able to sell ice in the mid-Atlantic summers. Really, the only solution was to take a whole lot of ice, put it in an insulated building, and hope some of it lasts until summer. And crazily enough, that worked. Most of North America started to rely on ice, so it was time for Frederick to take the ice trade intercontinental. The rest of the world also had hot places like India, so Frederick Tudor set up a regular shipment of ice to Calcutta, India, which became hugely popular with the rich English colonialists who were used to cooler temperatures. Amazingly, he had the process refined so well at that point that the ice from New England was selling in India for, adjusted for inflation, only one dollar per pound. Soon after, the ice from New England was shipped and sold in London, in Rio de Janeiro, in Cape Town, in Hong Kong. The New England ice even reached as far as Sydney, Australia, where it sold for only $2 per pound. So was it a coincidence that the climate started rapidly warming only a century after the world's elite started using ice ship from the other side of the world by steamship also they could have a chilled beverage? I'm not saying that the ice trade single-handedly caused climate change, but it certainly didn't help. Of course, with time, artificial refrigeration became cheap and widespread, but not before making Frederick Tudor a very rich man. Iceland today, despite what some may think, is not some backwards heathen society that shuns the use of refrigerators. Its importation of ice has to do with something else. Economics. You see, Iceland is a very expensive place. Like many isolated northern countries, Iceland relies on import for many things like oil, wood, wheat, and other food. It just doesn't have the ability to produce these items domestically due to its geography, but shipping to Iceland is also relatively cheap since its economy is export-driven. While fish is Iceland's biggest export, this is mostly shipped by plane, but the country also has an enormous aluminum industry thanks to its low electricity cost. Aluminum, along with most everything else Iceland makes, is exported by ship, which means that there's demand for shipping from Iceland. That means that ships are already coming to Iceland to bring items elsewhere, so it's relatively inexpensive to fill these ships with other goods to bring to Iceland. At the same time, the average Icelander makes about $57,000 per year. It's one of the highest income countries in the world, so that means that making things in Iceland, in most cases, is expensive. If you go and check your handy dandy Icelandic schedule of tariffs though, you see that water, ice, and snow have no import duty if imported from the European economic area. Therefore, Iceland imports ice from other less expensive countries in the EEZ such as Scotland, and the only additional cost is the cheap shipping. While there are plenty of other countries that don't charge import duties on ice, there are few that have the mix of high domestic labor costs and cheap inbound shipping that make it worth it for Iceland to import ice. That's why Iceland's grocery stores are being stocked with this imported ice from hundreds or thousands of miles away, as it ends up being about 40% less than Icelandic ice. If you want to sell a different kind of ice, you definitely need a Squarespace website. You can build a fully functional online store within minutes using their website builder so you can put all your attention into building your ice cream empire. 
In fact, if you run any sort of business, whether that be a brick and mortar store, a podcast, a YouTube channel, or anything else, you want to make a great first impression for your potential customers. And Squarespace helps you do that because their beautiful designer templates make it easy to build a website that looks great. Best of all, you can start building your website for free at squarespace.com HAI, and then when you're ready to launch, the same link will get you 10% off.